Guys, so let's start with a bit of a game, shall we? Um, uh, I've recently been sat in the chapo and found myself playing Linky, and I've loved it. So if you've never played Linky before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you four words, and you have to tell me what the connection is. Got it? Good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if I... Uh, by the way, you're not allowed to shout out. I'll give you 30 seconds, and then we can all enjoy it. Um, so uh, if I said to you, hammer, saddle, humorous, rib... 20 seconds. Oh, who is that? <laughs> Britain, stand up. No, don't. Uh, so it's bones. You got the idea? The one thing that was them bones, so hammer's a bone in your ear, as is a saddle, and rib there, humorous there. Um, okay, next one. Uh, church, listen. <laughs> church, pepper, cow, and fire. Ooh. If we get the real gamers. So what's connecting them all? Church, pepper, cow, and fire. Tasty? No. Any ideas? No. Jesus. Bell? Bell. Luke, our president, has got it. Give him a round of applause. Church bell, bell pepper, uh, cow bell, fire bell, okay? Now, this is where I was going with all of this, so you've, stick with me. Okay, Walt Disney, David Bowie, Mark Zuckerberg, and Albert Einstein. Who just said they're dead? <laughs> I de Mark Zuckerberg is definitely not dead. He's definitely not dead. Um, any suggestions? Oh, they're all men. That's disappointing. I should have put a woman in there. That's not the connection. Live in America. Live in America. Is that also right? Well, some of them are dead, so... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Matt. I don't think you're going to get it. Um, I, I've, I've made it such that you wouldn't. Uh, but, but those are all people, okay, who have given all of their resources, given all of their efforts. They've made it their lives work to further a particular field. Um, so it's Disney. <laughs> so Walt Disney, obviously furthering animation. Stay with me, come on. Um, David Bowie, furthering music. Uh, Zuckerberg, social media technology. Uh, and Einstein, science. Uh, and, and for many of us, for many of us, uh, it seems so appealing, doesn't it? Having a great sense of achievement from furthering, uh, taking something uh, that bit further on. Um, so Disney himself said this, we keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity leads us down new paths. Uh, now for you physicists, um, I caught the news that we've discovered these gravity waves uh, and there, there's this uh, head of physics in, in Adelaide and he said this, this is David Vetch, he said, I have spent 35 years working towards this detection and the success is very sweet. So with, with those of us, with, with our lives ahead, uh, each of us inevitably, we have those, those areas that we want to further, don't we? We want to be those who, who advance in different areas. And so in a sense, we're all committed to doing that. We're all those who are devoted to sort of furthering something. And, and if we understand rightly that God is Lord of all, then we can celebrate breaking new ground. Um, that was something that was uh, told to me only, only a few years ago, but, but God delights in to see us sort of advancing and, and furthering things. It's a really good thing. And as Christians, we can celebrate that, and it pleases God. And I'm convinced we'll see lots of these things that we're involved in advancing in the new heaven and new earth. But what I want to say tonight, really, and where all my linky links uh, have got us to, is the fact that I don't want us to miss the very thing. I don't want us to miss the fact that we're part of this greatest of movements. So it's really great that you've been going through 1 Corinthians uh, as I see you on your Thursday nights. If you haven't been here, where have you been? Uh, we've, we've reached a really good part, I think, uh, for a CU AGM, because we have Paul sort of laying out his stool. Uh, and and he's, he's really wanting to encourage those he's writing to. So um, those Corinthians, uh, they're, they're these ordinary Christians. But what Paul wants to say to them is, will you be committed? 
He's saying, will you be those who further something? Will you be those who further, who advance the gospel? That was what he wanted. He was, he was saying to those Corinthians, will you be those people in this city where they, there are those who are spiritually dead? Will you come and will you offer them out life, life that Christ offers? So Paul's hope, do you see, for these Corinthian Christians wasn't that they'd be captivated by anything less than that. He didn't want them to, to be concerned with furthering their own comfort, and where that's sort of so much what grips us a lot of the time. We, we just seem to be those who want to make life more comfortable for ourselves, don't we? He, d- he didn't want them to be those who were obtaining some sort of higher spirituality, yeah, sort of like taking themselves away, um, removing themselves from life itself and finding some kind of higher spirituality, higher Christianity. Um, and he didn't even want them to be making names for themselves. All of these things are short to what Paul had in mind. Because Paul wanted these individuals with their lives ahead of them to be those men and women who were sold out for the gospel. Purely and simply that. That they were sold out. They were committed to the gospel and sharing it. And he was calling then these men and women to be those who uh, would sort of take their part um, in, in living alongside those people who, who they had in their lives and seeking to bring them to faith. And so it's going to be so great to, to hear uh, in, in a few minutes um, some of your stories uh, of, of all God did over Events Week. Uh, I loved flicking through those, those feedback forms okay, after each of the lunch bars and each of the evenings um, when Tom and others had gone through them. It was so encouraging because we were involved in that very thing of furthering the gospel, weren't we? Um, and all of, those, all of those encouragements go a long way, I think, in, in giving us a glimpse of what, it is, what it's like to be involved in that very thing, of furthering the gospel, and why it's so exciting, and why we want to be part of the CU. But as we catch a glimpse of that, as um, we, we see something of, of God uh, sort of drawing to himself those that we know, there, there's the, at the same time, there's that thing in us, isn't it, where, where it very quickly fades. So, um, you know, not long after the, the highs of events week and things like that, um, we might be on the, round, on, the, on the receiving end of a round of rejections from our friends. Or, or that, that friend that you really hoped that you'd lined up to sort of read Uncover with, they call you up and they say, mate, not today, I don't feel it. And subconsciously, I think then we question things. And we're kind of brought to a fork in the road, if you like. Um, Is it the fact that furthering the gospel is just something else that we're committed to and it finds its place in our lives along with everything else? So I'm committed, yeah, okay, I'm committed to sharing the gospel, but I'm also also equally committed to my work and I'm equally committed to my friendships and and things like that. So it's not actually the ultimate thing. That's that's our one fork. Or the other fork, no, maybe it is actually an ultimate thing. It is the thing that we want to be involved in, advancing the gospel. And there's just something that we fail to factor into that. That There's something that often obscures it from us seeing it to be the ultimate thing and and kind of deters us and and leaves us with these sort of feelings of doubt and stuff like that. Well, I think that the passage that um, we had had read for us tonight really answers that for us. It's honest about the struggle. It's honest about the struggle of what it is to, to be those men and women Bath Uni sharing, seeking to share our faith, but also it's full of motivation. It's full of the stuff that's going to make us press on and carry on with this. So guys, if you've uh, shut your Bibles, open them again, um, because we picked, up, uh, we picked up with things in verse 24, but earlier in verse 19, Paul was really building this sort of uh, picture of being those who advance the gospel, where he was saying we're wanting to be those who are winning as many as possible. We're wanting to be those who are winning people for Jesus. And, and how would we do that? By all possible means. By all possible means, we might save some, verse 22. And so in our passage, Paul goes on to, to make plain to us that advancing the gospel is possibly, no more than that, it is the best thing that we could do with our lives. And I know for for many of you when you've seen that friend of yours grasp it when when you've had that that last of like i don't know it's been like 10 coffees or whatever and something's just clicked with them you know just how good it feels don't you 
you know just how good it feels. And Paul goes on to say, you know, if we're going to be those who are committed to this, if we're going to be those guys here today who are committed to advancing the gospel, if we're going to do it, then we need the single-mindedness of an athlete. And to this end, Paul draws up these comparisons after comparisons for us. And these give us our our three brief points for tonight. Um, So the first one is that we might run, run that you may obtain. Okay, so like many of us who've walked past the STV uh, day in, day out, uh, these Christians in Corinth, okay, would have known what it was like to see an athlete in the flesh, even if they weren't necessarily athletes themselves, and I count myself in that group. Uh, For those guys in Corinth, okay, they hosted sporting contests that were second to the Olympics. They were known, they were renowned for that. And so these Corinthians would have witnessed sort of firsthand uh, these races, like the 100 metre final, where only one competitor, okay, only one competitor would finish, and only one competitor would be crowned champion. And so with that comes a great deal of uncertainty, doesn't it? There's only one of you on that lineup, one of you out of the eight, is going to finish and be crowned champion. And uh, I've never been a sprinter, but if you were to get inside the head of a sprinter on the start line, the sorts of things that would go through their head would be, is my start going to be good enough? And I gonna, am I going to be able to ra- react to the gun in the shortest space of time? Will I dip at the right time going over the line? Am I going to take goals? With all of those questions come the reality that there's no certainty at all. Even Bolt, I think, sometimes doubts himself. And yet Paul says, Paul says we're to run in a way, we're to live out our lives in a way to get the prize. For as Christians, there is a certainty about receiving that prize. For there's more than just enough space for one on the winner's podium. There's enough room for us all. And it should really make us think that, shouldn't it? You think what that athlete gives, how much they give of themselves even though there's that great uncertainty that they might not win, that they might not get the prize. And yet, for us as Christians, we we should be those who run and run and run, shouldn't we? Christ has already secured our prize for us. We haven't got to think it's us. We don't have to hold back. And when we do that, it it changes the way we approach things. It changes the way uh, we, we go for things how we seek to share our faith, how we seek to advance the gospel. And also, I think, it changes how we view each other. So when you're on that start line and you're, you're looking at the other seven competitors, you just want to do all you can to beat them. But yet when you know, when you know that each of you is secure, when you know as Christians each of you is secure in Christ, then, then no longer are the people alongside you your competitors, but actually they're your, your training partners. And so with, it's, it's with that right kind of motivation that you kind of seek to outdo each other and, and challenge each other to step out further. And, and not so that you can boast. I'm not talking about that. God doesn't want to see that. But that we'd step out further, that we'd push ourselves, push one another for Jesus' sake and for the sake of our friends. So that's the first one. You'd run that you may obtain. The second... Have a look, uh, is be disciplined and endure hardship. So look in here, back down at 25, what have we got? Paul writes, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Uh, now, some of you have a phenomenon, I think, that you'll see on campus when you walk around. Uh, something actually that I think isn't just in Bath, but happens uh, elsewhere. It's certainly a thing in Exeter when I was there. BuzzFeed have coined it. It's like gym time all the time. I'm, of course, talking about people, okay, who walk around in all kinds of lycra hoods, sports gear, and they're not even doing sport. They're not even going to the gym that day. I've been found guilty of this too. I was the guy at uni who'd wear shorts to lectures. Uh, I wore wore shorts in the library, uh, wore shorts on the way home. I wore shorts. (laughs) Wanting to look super athletic. But in reality, you're just, you're just kind of chilling out. You're just chilling out. It's like gym time all the time. So that's what you can say to people when you walk past them. 
But my, me and all the other gym time, all the timers, would be found out though, wouldn't we? If we got hauled off parade and chucked into a physiology lab and put through our paces, our fitness wouldn't match up to the gear that we were wearing. And Paul's adamant that these Christians in Corinth are to exercise self-discipline and to actually endure hardship. So it's not just enough to hang around in your hoodie and your shorts, okay? You can't just do that. They were to stay in good shape. And they were to stay in good shape, not physically, but spiritually. If their friends stood any chance of them coming to faith, if we want to be those who are taking real leaps and real strides for the gospel in Bath, we've got to stay in good shape spiritually if our friends stand any chance of them coming to faith. And we have to deny ourselves as well. Because if we're honest, there's lots to distract us, isn't there? Plenty of things that would, would lure us away from living the life that God wants us to live. But we do need to see that if the gospel's going to advance, if we're going to see more of our friends and those that we come into contact with at Events Week and things like that coming to faith, we need to, each of us, be more disciplined. I'm speaking to myself as well. We must be more prepared. We've got to be bolder. What might this look like, Andrew? Well... As I said, this is something that I'm working through. I have key areas that I need to be more disciplined in. I, I, I could tell you, I could tell you the areas where I'm prone to struggle and I'm prone to fall. In verse 26, we're shown why this discipline is needed. That we're not to run aimlessly, and nor are we to spy or sort of shadow box, because we don't we don't have an enemy who's like a training partner. Okay, who's going to throw the old punch and then actually sort of you know. Okay, hands down. But our enemy, our spiritual enemy, is fierce. The one that we're coming up against is ever at hand. The world, the flesh, and the devil are what we're up against. But wonderfully, God has given means by which we might fight. And so as well, bless you, as well as being more disciplined, I've also got to be putting myself out more for my friends, haven't I? So I've got to kind of move away from just asking my mates to Christian stuff. I know you do it. I did it. Oh, you know, do you want to come along? See you were doing this lunch bar thing. Uh, do, you want, do you want to come along to events week? It's really, really good. But why is it that we never often take them up on their invites to things that they're inviting us to? Why do we sort of tend to stay away a bit? We need to put ourselves out there a bit more. We need to speak up too, even when it's difficult. Maybe, you know, in, in your lectures or, or in your seminar groups, uh, I certainly found it hard um, playing for a sports team when I was an athlete. Having that sort of boldness. And so that's why I'm genuinely impressed with you guys. When you really, when you really sought to make the most of Events Week and you were having those contacts with people, you are having those initial conversations with people on parade that, that, that took you to step out. Or maybe, you know, you were one of the ones who for the first time actually invited that mate to that lunch bar. And yes, it was a bit awkward initially, but they filled out the feedback form and they actually thanked you for coming. It's not enough for us to just hang around, is it, and look the part. We're needing to be bold. We've got to be disciplined and endure hardship. Guys, I want to say, if you've, I, I'm coming to the end. If, if you're still not sold yet on living your lives to further the gospel... If you're still not sold on that being the, the ultimate thing that you can give yourself to doing, I hope this will really cement it for you. Lastly, I want to say, uh, Paul shows us that we're to be those who seize this unfading reward. And picking up from verse 25, Paul says, have a look at it, everyone who competes in the games goes into training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it, get this, we do it to get a crown that will last forever. I wonder, what's the one picture you have in your head of what it will be like to see those three friends that you pray for regularly, to see those three friends that we keep bringing up that you might read Uncover with, that, that you might invite to things? I wonder what one picture you have in your head of what it would be like if those three friends come to faith. I wonder whether you've even had that picture in your head. Do you even think that's possible? But maybe, maybe if you... If you sort of summed up enough sort of creative thinking uh, and faith. Maybe you'd imagine them just grasping what Jesus has done for them after like the fifth uncover study. 
and, and you see the tears start to well up in their eyes. Maybe that's the picture you have in your mind. Or maybe what you have in your mind is, is them on their baptism service. When they've, when they've given their testimony, as Ellie's going to do uh, in a couple of weeks' time, a girl who became a Christian through the sea a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, maybe maybe that's, that's what you've got in your mind. Your friend coming to faith, giving their testimony. And, and once they've, they've sort of professed their faith in Jesus, once they've come up out of the water, you're the one to throw the towel around them. Something that you never thought do. Maybe that's the picture you have up in your mind. Well, Paul gives us quite a strange one, doesn't he? One of a crown that will last forever. Doesn't really sit with me, that Paul. Um, but it, it runs in his ideas and it runs in his, his writings elsewhere a picture of a crown a crown of, of righteousness of finishing the race keeping the faith but also a picture of a crown that represents our friends those who we've been instrumental in in bringing to faith all, all the little that we've we've done to to help them on their way on that last day we're told that those friends of ours will be our glory and our joy and that's an image that we want to keep in our heads, isn't it? Of seeing those um, who we long to come to faith. That indescribable moment of being in heaven, being with Jesus, and those we've gone out of the way to share our faith with, them being there, their eternal destiny having radically changed in their time here at Bath Uni, their imperfect relationship with God, they're there, you're there. Isn't that amazing? And we need it to land with us just how stark it is, uh, just how stark that contrasts with anything else we could, we could pour ourselves, anything else we could pour ourselves out for. So those, those athletes who were striving and striving, okay, what were they striving for? Well, Paul tells us a crown that was going to be there and then wasn't. It was temporary. It was just a wreath of leaves. And we all know what leaves do. They just wither, don't they? They die. Paul's speaking about an eternal crown with more, even more reason to run than the athletes, to discipline ourselves, to endure hardships. We've got even more reason to commit to the furthering of the gospel. That's why I want my days to count for. Is that what you're going to say after tonight? Is that what you want your days to count for? I'd love to motivate you. I'd love to get you to the point of saying, yes, that's what I want to give myself, Andrew, to that's what I want. To have each of you opening up to, to all those around you, going out of your way to, to deepen friendships. That's how it's going to start. Also, that there's a chance for even the hardest hearted to hear you when you say Jesus has life to offer them. Wouldn't that be awesome? Disney, Bowie, Zuckerberg, Einstein, what links them? They're all going down in history for all kind of advancements. But are we going to be those? Or are we going to be those who are committed to furthering the gospel and seeing things change for eternity? That's the great ends to which we want to strive as a you. That's why your vision is to give every student here at Bath the opportunity to hear and respond to the good news of Jesus. And that vision doesn't get worked out, unfortunately, in this room, but that vision gets worked out as you go out from this room. See you isn't an organisational structure. The CU isn't my baby. Forget those kind of ideas. The CU is you. And you going out and you fulfilling that vision. Changing the futures of your friends. That's why we want to be a CU running to get the prize. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much that um, you're gracious enough to call it us each by name. Lord, that you have um, brought us from death to life. Uh, Lord, and we can know you and have relationship with you. Lord, it should thrill our hearts and we're sorry when it doesn't. And it should motivate us to want to share you because it is the best news. And so, Lord, I thank you for all of the people in this room and every one of their gifts and all of the things that they love and all the things that they're committed to. And, Lord, I pray that we would be those who, who really seize these opportunities in these days to go out um, and to, to, to run the race, knowing that our prize is secure, knowing that our future with you is secure. And, Lord, as longing 
to, to pass that on to others or at least give them the opportunity. Lord, thank you that all you call us to do is speak about you and we can leave the results in your hands. Thank you that you're the one who opens blind eyes. And Lord, how we pray for more stories this term of you doing that in the, in the lives of our friends, not just of those who are going to come up in a minute, but in our friends. Help us to have the faith to believe that you want to do that and make us your instruments, we pray. Amen.